This is Bob Neal from Chicago. Well, first it was the flood a couple of weeks ago, and then it was the New York Knicks. What more is this city going to have to endure? The Bulls are down. 0-1 to one in this second round series against their hated arch rivals, the first city. People here still aren't happy about being called the second city, and they don't like being down one game to nothing to the Knicks. How did the Knicks do it? Everybody thought they were going to get swept by the defending world champion Chicago Bulls. Well, here's how you spell upset. Unsung heroes. That Knicks bench was spectacular, particularly Starks and Anthony. Patrick Ewing played one of his biggest games against the Bulls. They started great in the first quarter, something the Bulls usually do. Eliminated that Bulls running game. Only seven Knicks turnovers, and the Bulls vaunted defense came up with only one steal. So that's how the Knicks spell upset. Now, how do we spell the Knicks coming back for game two? What kind of mental condition do you think they'll be in tonight? Well, Bob, knowing Pat Riley the way I do, the one thing he's worked on the last 48 hours is the mental toughness of this New York team. And what I mean by that is they've played five tough games in a row. After the first game blowout of the Detroit Pistons, five very emotional games. They now know they have the home court advantage. He realizes tonight could be a downer emotionally. So I know he's worked with his team to get them prepared. We'll have to wait to see how they respond. Phil Jackson refused to call this a must game, but he said it was an urgent game. What about the Bulls and adjustments they'll have to make? Well, I think the most important thing, they're going to have to pressure the basketball and force some turnovers. Not one Chicago dunk in the game the other night. Wow. Fast break points were basically nil. Only one steal. They've got to create some turnovers, and I think they have to get Horace Grant involved. It was a 1-2-3 attack this year. Pippen and Jordan and Grant. Horace Grant's numbers are down. He needs to play big. The Bulls historically have stopped Patrick Ewing. Not so in game one. How about tonight? When he steps off the lane to post, Bob, they're going to have to do something a little differently. They're going to have to crowd him, take him off the quick jump shot. When he puts it on the floor, now run somebody at him, make him pass the ball off the dribble. Well, just before we came into our opening here, Doug asked Scotty Pippen, how's that ankle? He said, it is sore. We'll be back with player introductions and this game two in the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs right after this. It was a beautiful day in Chicago. The people here will feel it's beautiful tonight, only if their Bulls can come back from this 0-1 deficit. Let's take a look at the Jeep Eagles starting lineups. Well, again, I think we talk about the matchup, Horace Grant and Charles Oakley. Horace needs to get off to a good first quarter. Bill Cartwright, a season-high 41 minutes the other night. Will Phil Jackson have to go to his bench early to either Scott Williams or Will Perdue? Stacey King out again tonight with tonsillitis. Speaking of bench, the New York bench uh, at one time had outscored the Bulls bench 22 to nothing, finished up with a 28 to 9. As you look at Pat Riley, who's done such a great job with getting these Knicks into real playoff intensity. Uh, what about that bench? Well, I, I think that he's not going to hesitate at all. First of all, we saw that uh, Oakley the other night only played 16 minutes. Anthony Mason played 32. And Starks and Greg Anthony, 24 minutes each off the bench. So the minute the Bulls made a run the other night, he came quickly in with his three bench players. So he has great confidence in those people, giving them speed and quickness off the bench against the Bulls' athleticism. On the other hand, how about Phil Jackson and Johnny Bach, his defensive coach there on his... Uh, on his right what about their confidence well I think that Phil's confidence in his bench is down right now when you look at the minutes of the night BJ Armstrong 16 other than that Scott Williams 9 Hodges 5 Purdue 2 Cliff Levingston 4 I think he's gonna have to go to his bench and I think they're gonna have to get some production again the Bulls won the championship by not just having Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan but production from a lot of people so they're gonna have to get that back after the Miami series where Scotty and Michael really carried them you see there in playoff history, 17 game one losses for the Bulls. You look at the officials, Mathis, Mahalik, and Baden. Uh, but last year, the Bulls lost in the finals to the Lakers in game one, came back and swept L.A. for the world championship. Again, I think the key is, uh, you know, how will this game be officiated? The other day, the other night, it was officiated as such where both teams could get out and play good, solid defense. Ten to shoot for the Bulls. Paxson. Chicago. Well, that was better ball movement on that possession than Chicago really had all night. I think this first quarter is going to really be key. The other night, New York played a terrific first quarter. This will tell us a lot about where they're going to be the rest of the game. Oakley from outside. Scotty Pippen playing with a sore ankle, and the Bulls have a three on three. Pippen missed the lay in rebound. Ewing. He had 16 boards in game number one to go with his 34 points and six blocks. That's the first time Scotty got all the way to the basket, though. 
McDaniel bumped Pippen away, then missed the turnaround jumper. Jordan only four points in the first quarter in game one. There's your man right there that's going to have to play. Oakley was there for the good defense. Ewing with the rebound. McDaniel, the ball fake to Wilkins, takes the jumper. It's tied at two. See, Horace Grant can beat Charles Oakley up and down the floor with his speed and quickness. So if he'll get out and run in the Bulls with defensive rebound, Horace can get some easy baskets. If he wants to muscle in the post against Oakley, he's going to get pushed out of there. Now Cartwright pushed off the block, facing the basket with seven on the shot clock. Pippen. See, Scotty, though, not settling for the outside jump shot. That's two drives. One rolls off this one that gets the kind bounce. Jackson. Earl Wilkins to Patrick Ewing. Way away from the basket. He was successful with this shot in game one. McDaniel, big offensive board inside of Scotty Pippen. If New York has an advantage, it's the feeling that they can muscle Chicago inside. Xavier McDaniel with the offensive rebound. They feel like that they can do a better job on the offensive boards than they did in game one. Horace Grant gave Michael Jordan the pick for the jumper. Michael's first points of the night. Phil Jackson wants his team up, picking up full court, pressuring, trying to force some turnovers. Chicago has only forced 13 turnovers a game in the playoffs. On the season, almost 16 a game. Their pressure defense is down right now. Knicks with only seven in game one. Pippen punches it away. Six on the shot clock for New York. Play call. Charles Oakley will inbound. That's a three. There's another offensive rebound. Now Ewing all alone on the baseline from Oakley. Nice pass by Charles Oakley. It's muscle against speed and quickness right now when you face these two front lines. Trying to deny Jordan the penetration. First foul of the ball game called against Mark Jackson. See, one thing New York does very, very well, and I think it's one of the reasons they were able to beat Detroit, is Ewing's defend screen roll so very well he jumps out and he chases you away and does not allow you to turn the corner the Detroit guards could not get in the lane Pippen and Jordan have had the same difficulty traveling call on Cartwright tied at six nine minutes to go first quarter Bill shuffled his feet as he tried to bang against Patrick Ewing Cartwright loves to get contact Patrick backed off him when he did Cartwright was called with shuffling his feet Full court pressure from the Bulls now. There's the trap. There's, there's where they're very effective right here. They're going to face Oak, make Oakley handle the basketball. And Horace Grant is so quick that he can double team the ball and still get back. Saw very little of that end to end pressure from the Bulls in game number one. When they did, uh, the Knicks handled it very well, particularly Anthony Mason off the bench. Ewing. Hold it. Got a little action here going already. Xavier McDaniel and Horace Grant. Everybody trying to call tempers. Neither team wants to lose one of these players. Pat Riley with Xavier McDaniel and Michael Jordan had his arm around Horace Grant calming him down. I think the cooler heads have prevailed. Horace Grant is a very emotional player and a very sensitive player. Phil Jackson is going to talk to him right now. We'll have to see what's going on underneath the basket. He, there's the contact underneath between McDaniel, and there's the push and the slap with Horace Grant. And now you're going to see McDaniel bump against Scottie Pippen. So we had a loose ball foul on Xavier McDaniel, then a double technical called after the shoving on McDaniel and Horace Grant. And we're back into action. Had either player thrown a punch, it's an ejection. That was basically a slap, so no, no further penalty other than the fact that we have to keep in mind now another technical on either one of those players and they're out of the ball game. 8.38 to go in the first quarter. Low scoring game, two and a half minutes gone, only six points scored by each team. John Paxson early. He shot it well the other night. Game one. John six for ten, 12 points, although a lot of those came early. The Bulls have court defense intense here early. Eight to shoot. 
three seconds called on the Knicks. That's a violation and a turnover. Bob, if we watch the New York offense, we'll get a chance. They're crossing their guys underneath. McDaniel and Oakley are continually crossing underneath to try to confuse Grant and Pippen. We'll watch as the game goes on, but they bothered him with screening across the other night. Pippen on the drive. Ewing with the block. Oakley the rebound. Three on two. Jackson passing to McDaniel for the jam. We're tied at eight. 7.46 to go first quarter. I'll tell you what, Patrick Ewing has got 22 block shots now in the playoffs. When you go to the basket against him, he is challenging every shot. Clearly the league's dominating center. The foul call on Gerald Wilkins. The universal foul, 21, Gerald Wilkins. We made the point the other night, normally out on the perimeter, they're going to call the fouls a little bit closer than they call them underneath. You've already seen two basically touch fouls out on the floor underneath. They let the guys play a little bit more. There's Paxson again. He's three for three. 10-8 Chicago. Paxson feeling the rhythm. Well, he's a rhythm shooter. When you get him the ball in the right spot and let him get a good look at the basket, he can shoot the open shot as well as anybody in the league. There's the double up and the cross underneath. How about the block? And they're going to call a jump ball. Wave off the basket. Pippen blocked McDaniel, and they'll jump it up. Xavier McDaniel, if he would have shoveled the ball off to Oakley, Oakley had a layup. You're going to see the crossing underneath. There's the pass off. Now, had he just shuffled the ball over, you don't see Oakley. He's right beside him. Had he just handed the ball off, it would have been an easy layup. Daniel not ready for that jump. Chicago ball leading 10-8, 6.58 to go in the first quarter. Chicago scored only 16 points in the first quarter on Tuesday night. Pippen inside again. Eight seconds to shoot. Twice now, Horace has been down. Wilkins over the double team. Nice offensive play. Well, they got a little cross match there. Paxson got caught on Wilkins. He used his size advantage, just backed it down. Michael Jordan tried to come over just a little bit too late to get there. We have to keep our eye, too. If, if John Paxson continues to blow hot in this game, Bobby, you might see Anthony come in early because his speed and quickness bothered Paxson the other night. Mark Jackson right now. Not nearly the defensive player Anthony is, and he's struggling a little bit with the leg that he hurt in the Detroit series. Bulls by two. Jackson open, open. As, open. I, said, as I said, he's struggling with that leg, so he turns the corner and lays it in. <laughs> they were thinking the same thing. <laughs> that was a clearer lane than any of the Chicago freeways have been the last few days. It's tied at 12, 5.48 to go in the first quarter of play. Knicks have come out here strong once again at Chicago. Well, the Knicks, Knicks have come out strong again. It's 12 all here, 5.48 in the first quarter. Let's see what happens here. If we hold it right there, there's confusion here. You don't even see John Paxson. He's over on the other side. But basically a double screen. So as Mark Jackson comes in here, actually a double pick where Cartwright screened his own man. And if we hold it right there, no reaction by Michael or Horace. Both of them let him turn the corner and go right to the basket for the easy score. Gerald Wilkins picked up his second personal foul. Team fouls, by the way, the Knicks four. The Bulls have committed none so far. And look at this shooting difference as Starks checks into the game. On Tuesday, at this point early in the ballgame, the Knicks had shot 27%, Chicago 11%. Tonight, the Knicks are 6 of 11 for 55, and the Bulls 6 of 10 for 60. Big difference in both teams. I think Chicago's got better shots at the basket. Paxson specifically early has gotten off to a very good start hitting three outside shots. Starks comes in. He's all over Jordan trying to defense him out of the post. Called for his personal. That's five. The Knicks are in the penalty. I think another thing we're seeing is Michael Jordan is posting here early in the ball game, trying to put the pressure defensively. Wilkins already has picked up two fouls, as has Starks. We talk so often about Michael Jordan and his terrific post play, so let's see if Chicago continues to run him in there, cause problems for the New York guards. And once again, free throw shooting troubles. The Bulls centers couldn't hit any free throws. Up. 
one Will for eight. Purdue came in for two minutes and we went over for four and Cartwright struggled too. One for eight. One for eight between Williams, uh, Purdue, and Cartwright the other night. As a team, they shot 15 for 23, only 65 percent. And I don't know how many times we talk about rebounding and free throws being vitally important in a playoff game. I got, I got open. And the Bulls usually with a substantial edge in getting to the line. And hitting. Well, what you want to is when you make your free throws, now you can pressure defensively. So now Chicago gets a chance to set up their pressure. This is tough. Let's see how they handle it. Once again, the Bulls force Oakley to handle. He goes down. It's out of bounds. Chicago ball. This is what they want. Oakley handling the basketball. Charles has got to pick up the basketball and find the open man. Horace Grant is exceptionally quick, and he forced Oakley here to turn. Had he not fallen, Pippen would have stolen coming in from behind. Bulls by one. 529 to go in the first quarter. Jordan against Starks. Again, it's differential at night. Going into the post. Blocked by Oakley. Nine seconds to shoot for Chicago. Well, you don't see that very often. Charles Oakley, not what you would call a great shot blocker. In fact, in the playoffs, he has only two blocked shots. They came over on the weak side as Michael tried to scoop that underhand and helping him block it. But yeah, it was good defensive positioning. That, that was a low release block, and that was, <laughs> I agree. Underhand helps. Seven to shoot. Starks trying to stop Michael. Starts lightning quick. Oakley comes to help. Rims out of there. Pippen with the offensive loose ball. Boy, going back in the post to Michael again. They're trying to get another foul on Starks. This time, nobody can stop him. And Michael Jordan has seven early. I think that's every coach's nightmare, Michael Jordan posting up against your other big guard because he plays in there like a man about 6'9". And now with the free throw situation, both teams with the meeting and the penalty, he's going to shoot two free throws every time he's fouled for the rest of the quarter. Starks only weighs about 175 pounds, too. He doesn't have a lot of strength to be able to push Michael out of there. It's a one-point game. Jordan and Paxson with 13 in Chicago's 15. Make that 15 of the 17. Really feel that Michael's trying to make a statement here in the first quarter. He's coming out, and normally he does that when he wants his team to get off to a good start in the first quarter. He tries to have big first quarters. He had only four in game one, four points. Pippen went for the steal. McDaniel in Ewing for the jam. It's a one-point game. I will tell you this right now. The New York Knicks are playing a much more inspired game right now than I thought they would be. I, the mental edge I thought would be a little bit off of the other night. Now we'll have to see whether they can sustain it for 48 minutes, but they are playing very intense basketball right now, not backing down an edge. Once again, Jordan post. Backing starts in for the turnaround. Jordan has 11. Charles Oakley fell down, so what this is going to do is it's going to give Chicago every dead ball situation a chance to come up and pressure. As I talked to the Knicks coaches today, they felt that you were going to see more of this, the full court, the three-quarter man-to-man pressure, and you see that every dead ball situation after a made free throw or a miss like this where you've had a chance now for the referee to hand you the basketball. Michael really talking to the young John Starks. You saw what that did. There's a steal. Chicago Bulls feed off of and Pat Riley knows that he's gonna call time. Bulls by five. Michael Jordan has ignited the crowd. He started that by talking to the young John Starks and causing him to lose his concentration. We've seen it before. 318 to go in the first quarter. The Bulls have built a five-point lead and gotten this crowd into the game particularly with that 94-foot defense they've been playing. Jordan has scored the last 11 points for Chicago. Chicago has nine field goals. Michael, six for eight. Paxson, three for three. So they are nine for 11. Scotty Pippen has the other. So right now, Chicago off to a very good start. The crowd is into the game. Their defense is active, something I'm sure Phil Jackson is very happy about. Let's see if they do it. There's the double team off the dribble. And you see Paxson coming that time. 
And what they're going to force Patrick Ewing to do is the other night he squared up and he hit that jump shot. You got to crowd him, force him to put it on the floor, and then when you do, run the guy at the top at him and make him pass the ball off the dribble. This is the first foul against Chicago in this game with only 3.07 to go in the first quarter. Knicks have been in the penalty for the last two minutes. See, I think Cartwright's got to get up on him tougher than that. Jackson loves that floater in the lane. Good pass from Patrick Ewing. It's a three-point full sweep with 2.55 to go. Bill Cartwright has got to have confidence that if Patrick Ewing beats him, he's going to give help. He's got to chase him off that quick jump shot. Starks punched it away, and you saw Michael with the conversation. Look at Starks right back at him. The one thing when you play against Michael Jordan, you not only have to stand up to him physically, you have to stand up to him mentally because he will torment you with his play. Just like that, in your face. See, he looks for an edge. He looks for something to get him in this kind of frame of mind. He wants Starks to come back at him. Jordan hit his last five shots. They're talking right now. Jackson fouled as he gets into the paint again. I, I feel that it's a matchup that can hurt Chicago. Mark Jackson is not exceptionally quick, but he's bigger than John Paxson, and if he can crab dribble you into the lane, not necessarily with quickness, but if he can get in there, he's got a little half hook, a little floating shot that he's very adept at finishing. That's twice he's been in there now tonight. This time he'll go to the foul line. Two Chicago fouls. The earlier one on Cartwright, this one on Paxson. Now Will Purdue coming into the game along with B.J. Armstrong. Purdue came in and had what one of the newspaper guys here in Chicago called the worst two minutes in basketball. He did have a tough time. He missed, he threw up two air balls from the field and missed four free throws, but historically has played well against Ewing and against the Knicks. Let's see how the Chicago bench does tonight. They were, as a group, a disappointment on Tuesday night. They went 38 minutes the other night without their bench scoring a point. Finally, finally Scott Williams hit a jump shot. The 38 minutes, they finished with nine off the bench, but B.J. Armstrong only two for two for seven. They need him now to get a little defensive presence also against Mark Jackson. He's a little quicker than John Paxson. has a tendency sometimes to get a little out of control. He's got to be very careful not to take this too much of a challenge. Sometimes he wants to take it personally. He's got to run this team. Daniel against Pippen. Powering in. Off balance. Williams with a rebound. That's an excellent defense by Pippen. Good ball movement by 
Chicago. Pippen misses. Purdue rebounds. Pippen miss. Now Mason with it. You got to like the multiple shot opportunities by Chicago. They got three shots at the basket. There's a silly foul by Scott Williams in the backcourt. That's going to be the penalty situation. You don't need those kind of fouls. That's two gimme points. Opportunity here for the Knicks to pull to within one point with 31 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oakley's about to get back into the game for New Anthony Mason is 6'7", 250 pounds from Tennessee State. Was a little too skinny when he played in college and uh, decided to go to a weight program, and he, he may have overreacted. Yeah, I saw the quote in the paper. Body. He said, I think I overdid it. <laughs> Ewing with a rest. And Michael Jordan sitting down. Hodges in the game. Remember, he's an excellent three-point shooter, so Chicago basically with two excellent three-point shooters and B.J. Armstrong and Hodges on the floor. Probably Pippen will handle the ball in this possession. Free those two guys up to shoot. Gonna go screen roll, Purdue. Scotty Pippen. See how they defend screen roll. They chase you off the play, though. Do not allow you to turn the corner. Beautiful pass from Purdue. BJ Armstrong knocks it down. I didn't think he had his hands on the ball. He looked like he did not have the grip of the basketball. He wasn't able to make the shot. Except he should have passed the ball to the corner. I don't know if we're going to get a chance to see the whole action. But watch this now. He's going to get in the lane. Right there, he's got to pitch the ball to the corner to the guy with a wide open shot. You see McDaniel was standing there. He challenged and got his shot blocked. That's what I was talking about. He's got to run the team. Bobby, he's got to dish to these guys to get them easy shots. McDaniel knew that wasn't going to go the minute he let it go. We have seven tenths of a second in a much more intense first quarter and the Bulls with a lead here. They could score only 16 on Tuesday night. Try a full court pass here to Pippen, see if he can catch it. Intercepted by McDaniel. And at the end of the first quarter, we've got another good one going here. Bulls 27, Knicks 24. In Chicago, about 70 degrees and sunny. Beautiful day here today. First quarter scoring. Take a look at this, Doug. New York right on line, but look at Chicago's discrepancy. Chicago is a, is a team that loves to get off to a great start in the first quarter. They didn't in game one. In game two, Michael Jordan has changed that with 17 of the 27 points. John Paxson hit his first three shots, so he and uh, Michael combined for 23 of the 27 points. If you put B.J. Armstrong with two in there, the guards had 25 of the 27 points. Michael Jordan just off to a blazing start. 8 of 11 field goal. 17 points in the first quarter. B.J. Armstrong in at the point for Chicago now. Bob, let's talk a little bit about this second quarter. The other night, the Bulls got themselves in trouble when Michael and Scotty both sat out in the second quarter. Neither one of them were on the team with the second unit. Tonight, you see Pippen on the team on the floor with the second unit. He stabilizes that team. He makes them better as a group than they are individually. So let's see what happens. Starks lost the, dri the dribble after the defense from Craig Hodges. Oh, Purdue playing Oakland. See, New York actually going without a center. They're going a three forward attack with Mason, McDaniel, and Oakland. Seven to shoot Starks from long range. Horace Grant grabs that board. Bulls by three. Retreated defensively against B.J. Armstrong. We've talked about his excellent shooting. B.J. Armstrong called for the foul. That's the first team foul in the second quarter. Off his leg. Boy, he's very fortunate that ball went in the backcourt. I'm surprised that wasn't over and back because it went off his leg. Absolutely.
That's what frustrates Charles Oakley. He can get inside, but he can't finish. And because of that, he caused himself problems offensively. He looks for the first chest that he can jump into, trying to draw the foul, hoping to get contact. See, he makes a nice move, but right there he can't finish, so he looks for the first available chest to get contact. That time, the offensive foul. Ewing back into the game, as is Gerald Wilkins. But Daniel and Oakley sit down. 30 to 24 goals, 11 minutes to go first half. New York's got to go to Patrick Ewing with this lineup on the floor right now. They've got to get the ball inside to him against Will Purdue. See if he can exploit that matchup with Cartwright resting. Good ball move, but then Mason now finally shoots over Purdue after the switch. A little passing game that time just to get some motion, feeling that Pat Riley feeling there was too much dribbling going on. He can pass the basketball a little bit more. Well, I tell you, they're doing a great job against Pippen. They're giving him nothing. They're getting him in the air. He's leaving his feet. Every shot is contested, and a lot of passes are being deflected. How about this? Chicago front line. Pippen two points. Grant none. Cartwright none. When we talked about B.J. Paxson and, uh, and uh, M.J. were basically the offense tonight. Tend to shoot Anthony on the drive. Offensive foul on Greg Anthony. A little bit what I was talking about where you get there and you have to make a decision and Greg Anthony's not going to jump over these big guys in the NBA he has exceptional speed and quickness but right here he's got to start gathering himself just jumps right into Scottie Pippen that's another turnover Bulls by four 956 to go first half Jordan lost the dribble Michael Jordan is in the game now as a small forward, so Pippen sets out, but you can see Phil Jackson's not going to have that team out on the floor with either Michael or Scotty not out there with him. One of those guys are going to be on the floor all the time. Got that ball over with two seconds to go on. I still think Ewing's got to catch the ball in this possession, Bob. Get him a chance to work against Will Purdue. Seven seconds to shoot. Four. Three. Long range, Anthony. Remember the other night in the game, late in the ball game, Anthony two or three times with one on one, and Ewing really got after him. He says, "Start passing the basketball." We'll have to watch to see now. He tells Anthony to pass the basketball like he did the other night. Michael back again, draws the double team. Good ball down to Purdue. Missed the layup. That ball went right off Ewing from Anthony. Hit Ewing right in the side of the head. There's no way Anthony, he would have had to have Velcro on the ball in his uniform. That would have to have stuck to him because <laughs> that ball was going so fast. New York's front court outscoring Chicago 16 to 2 at this point in the ball game. Boy, they're really working to get Michael the ball in the post. Oh, Grant was bothered by Ewing. Likewise with Stark. That was punched away by Michael, so it's not an over and back. Now, Ewing has not touched the ball in the offensive end the last four times down the floor. There you go. Finally gets the basketball. Rebound, Grant. Ewing got it in close. He had a great shot. He just missed a, a little six-footer in the lane. See what the Bulls are doing. Anytime there's a screen roll and Michael, they're, they're forcing him baseline, and the minute he starts to go baseline, Ewing is coming to fill underneath the basket, and he's going to meet him out high so he cannot get all the way to the basket to draw the foul or get the dunk. So watch on screen roll, pushing baseline, and Ewing coming big to try to cause problems. Three fouls on Wilkins. Broken up. Good Knicks defense. Nice pass. Starts with the catch. They wave away the basket. Hodge got him on the way to the hoop. Chicago getting a little bit better production out of their bench, but the Knicks now with a chance to tie this game with 7.59 to go in the half. The, the question you have is Michael Jordan is working very, very hard early in this ball game. He's scoring big, but he's working hard for everything. You have to wonder if fatigue will be a factor. The other night, I thought he got a little tired. He played in game one 44 minutes and so somebody else is going to have to start producing a little bit for him bob right now scotty pippen struggling 
Scott Williams and Levingston are going to get in the game for Chicago. Kiki Vandeweghe on the floor for the first time in this series for New York. Now the reason that's a two-shot foul, it's only the second bull foul because there's a rule that says clear path to the basket. And as he caught that ball, the referee ruled he had a clear path to the basket, so when the foul was made, he gets the two free throws. And he did, in fact, have a clear path to the basket. And a chance now to tie this ball game. So it's Kiki Vandeweghe, Anthony Starks, Ewing, and Mason on the floor for New York. Grant, Scott Williams, Levingston, B.J. Armstrong, and Jordan playing for Chicago. We're tied at 30. New York, six great points. Chicago does a screen roll and as horse Grant steps up to set the screen you're going to see Wilkins is going to push Michael this way and watch the reaction of Ewing to come over here quickly so he can't turn the corner do not want Michael to get in the middle so you see him push him and look at Ewing here he comes to meet him so they're playing really his zone. the foul was called but you can see the philosophy do not let Michael get in the heart of the defense where he can find people Patrick Ewing is going to be the plugger. He's going to come in there and either block shots or cause you to change your shot around the basket. New York on an 8-0 run, leading at 32-30. Going to post Levingston against Vandeweghe. B.J. Armstrong open for the jumper. Greg, at 32. Greg Anthony's got to stay with B.J. Armstrong. He's got the hot hand tonight. He's got to stay with him and not give so much help. Let the other guys play their men straight up. One field goal from their front court tonight. It's been all guards. Chicago also only one basket off the break tonight. Traveling call. New York turnover. Scott Williams did a nice job moving his feet. That's the same move Cartwright made a while ago where he shuffled his feet before the contact was made. Cartwright's been on the bench a long time. I think they're going to go with the younger, fresher legs against Ewing. Might be causing problems with that. Williams for Michael Jordan doesn't get it. Gets his own rebound. Runs over Anthony. Wave away the basket. That's on Vicky Vandeweghe. Well, you can really see when Michael puts it on the floor, they, they're going to come at him. Someone is going to come at him and force him to pass the ball. Cliff Levingston had a jumper two possessions ago. That time, Scott Williams. And you can see Michael talking to his guys about getting to the open area. This is something Detroit did a few years ago, and, and the supporting cast was not able to come through. Last year, they did. So they're going to have to start making some of these outside shots. And the conclusion of tonight's game, Doug and I will be selecting the Budweiser player of the game. Bulls by one. Pippen back into the game. B.J. Armstrong goes to the bench. Scotty Pippen has one field goal. Grant has not scored. Neither is Cartwright. Interesting lineup here. Pippen and Jordan as guards. They're going to go big guards, and they're going to go a bigger front line, really without a center. So see if they can take advantage of the smaller New York guards. Starks now playing against Pippen. Anthony against Jordan. Shuffled his feet, took the three anyway, missed it. Anthony runs down the loose ball. So that speed and quickness to run that ball down. Starks misses a three, rebound Michael Jordan. Now the ball's on the run. Two Pippen. Livingston is fouled. Second personal foul. Third team foul on the Knicks. Two have been called on the Bulls with 6-12 to go in the half. Bob, as I watched that possession, as, as Michael Jordan rebounded and threw ahead to Pippen, and Scotty threw that pass, 
that Levingston was fouled on. I watched Michael go over to him and try to encourage Scotty. Scotty's playing a little tentatively right now, and I don't know if it's the ankle or because he's had a little bit of problems scoring around the basket, but they need him. It's that one-two attack that makes them so potent. Cart right now back into the ballgame for Horace Grant. Horace Grant again, no points. So Horace, they've done a great job of taking him out of the game. Jordan and Starks chatting with each other. Now the That's reason a great scene just off to the right there. Now the reason he's like that is because Michael loves on a missed free throw to come blowing down the lane to dunk it. So Starks is face guarding him so Michael can't come in. And now Pippen's going to come over like he's going to screen him to try to get him in there again. Two missed free throws by Levingston. We saw Michael do that to Steve Smith in the Miami game, and it was unbelievable. I asked Michael after the game, what were you saying to him? He said, I was telling him how well he was playing. <laughs> Steve thanked him very much. Though. Starks hard to the hoop, can't get it to go down. Big board from Scott Williams. Bulls by two. See how much longer before Pat Riley comes back with Xavier McDaniel for Kiki Vandewey. Jordan oh. with the feed to Levingston. Fourth team foul on the Knicks. Good foul, though. Kip Levingston just missed two. We saw this the other night with Will Purdue, Bob. Missed two free throws. You don't give up any layups. Michael Jordan again gets inside the nice dish as Ewing goes in the air. And there's the foul. Cliff Levingston's got to make that one. Levingston has shot only two free throws coming into this game. He's 0 for 3 here tonight. This is the exact scenario with Will Purdue the other night. The Bulls now 4 of 7 from the line. Mike Mathis having difficulty out there trying to get everybody in position for the free throws. concerned really right now not so much as the, the defensive fouls down low but I think he's worried about the offensive production right now because it's been a chore for Chicago to score in the half court they have not been able to get out and get these easy runouts and these dunks and, and, and get this crowd involved in the game anytime they've done that Pat Riley's called timeout so in a half court game they have struggled Michael Jordan had a big first half with 17 Paxson had six and B.J. Armstrong seven, so the majority of their scoring is coming from their perimeter people. McDaniel back in for Kiki Vandeweghe. Chicago trying to reinsert Horace Grant. Jordan's turnaround over Starks. First points of the quarter for Michael Jordan. He had 17 in the first quarter, but now with 4.47 to go in the half, gets his first field goal. Ewing has had only four field goal attempts. He hasn't even touched the ball that much tonight, as Doug has been pointing out. They're going to have to get him, no question about it, more involved. But the Bulls doing a good job of, of, uh, of keeping him away from the ball once the ball gets uh, into that passing area. They don't let him get the ball. Well, Bob, the one thing they've done is Patrick has had the little face-up jump shot, but he's run away from it early in the game right here. He had at that time, he put it on the floor. The other night, he was shooting that shot against Cartwright. And knocking it down. 
Richmond. See, he was stepping out off the lane about right where he is right now, squared up, and that's the shot he was taking. He's wanting to put it on the floor now and create, and the Bulls want that. They want him to be a passer. four shots in this ball game but that shot the last possession I think sort of typifies what Patrick Ewing is doing now, I don't know if he's tired or exactly what it is but that's the shot he was shooting the other night he took 11 shots in the first half which he made three in the second half he was 11 for 14. Bulls by seven biggest lead of the game with 417 to go in the half when you foul remember you get full court pressure that's what's going to happen John Paxson's an excellent free throw shooter so you can expect after he makes this free throw for the Bulls to come up and press it's a bolt and here's the press Patrick Ewing broke the press. They brought him up to let him handle it against Cartwright. Nice job. Made the good pass for McDaniel also. Goals by six. Four minutes to go. First half. But Michael's posting up so much tonight. He's wearing him out in the post. Starks can't handle him in there. Jordan is 10 of 13 for 21 points. See, Chicago's scrambling the game right now. They're disrupting New York, and they're not allowed to get into that offense. They're forcing them now to play an open court game. Pass into Mason. The stripped away. McDaniel had it blocked. New York's got to be real careful when they take quick shots. It's going to play right in the Bulls' hands. Because this is the kind of game Chicago wants right here. Shot. He has not shot the outside shot. He's one for six tonight. We'll have a jump ball. And Kennard Winchester checks into the game for the New York Knicks. It's an interesting substitution. The second year from Everett College. Well, he's going in for John Starks, and I'm sure that's too play post defense against Michael Jordan if he takes a couple fouls maybe to try to wear him out a little but he's a bigger stronger body than John Starks because Michael right now is basically doing his damage in the post um, they're the same height Winchester and Starks but Winchester brings get this now 30 more pounds into the fray so he's carrying a heavier load is what you're saying right you might say 43 35 Bulls timeout New York three minutes to go in the half Two in the Eastern semifinals. The Bulls with an eight-point lead. The Knicks won the first game. This is the first of a doubleheader we'll have tonight on TNT. Coming up, the Prudential Halftime Report. Ernie Johnson Jr. will be joined by Bill Pitch in the studio. They'll preview game two, Phoenix and Portland. It will be going to right after this one. And also, Craig Sager will have a look at tomorrow's Cavaliers-Celtics matchup. Let's look at Patrick Ewing. Now, this is the shot he took the other night, this medium post shot. He steps off, and we hold it right there. He's squared up, shoulders square to the basket. And look how much room Cartwright's given him, but he's deciding he wants to take it. Here comes Paxson, and they're going to give Mark Jackson that shot. This is the Bulls. They're going to come get him on dribble. Patrick's going to have to square up and take that shot. Bulls by eight, biggest lead of the game. Michael wants it in the post against Winchester. Here comes a big double team. Grant Mason got a hand on the ball and on Horace Grant and will be called for the foul. Knicks in the penalty. Bulls will be next time they commit a foul. Grant with his opportunity for his first points tonight. Morris playoff numbers are down a little bit. I know in the Miami series that Michael and Scotty had real big series, but you look at his numbers, he's 54% from the field down from about 58 on the regular season. He's at about 10.8, 14.2 on the season. His rebounding is down from 10 a game to 7.3. So I really believe they've got to revitalize Horace Grant as they move on in this playoffs. 
First two points of the night for Horace, and it's a 10-point Bulls lead. This is critical time right now for New York. There's an offensive foul on Johnson. Pushing away from John Paxson. And the Bulls get the turnover. If, Chi if Chi excuse me, Bob, if Chicago could hit them with three or four more baskets and get them down 16 or 18, I, I think you would see a blowout here because I don't know how much emotion New York's got in them after all those tough games they played in a row. Four offensive fouls on New York tonight has contributed to turnovers every time, too. Of course, four point turnaround, you might say. Look at four to shoot, Jordan. Misses, finally. But it's run down by Cartwright, then off his leg, Nick's ball. Bill is struggling. He's not been able to get himself in sync. Played 41 minutes in game one, remember, which was a season high. And I think the Chicago coaching staff is concerned that he has to play two games in less than 24 hours, or about 24 hours on Saturday and Sunday. Winchester missed the pass down to Ewing. It was touched by the Bulls. Mike Mathis awards the ball to the Knicks. Let's talk a little bit about Patrick Ewing. Only four field goal attempts, only four rebounds, no offensive, and he's not been to the free throw line. I did not see Michael touch that ball. Nevertheless, 2.04 to go in the half, 14 on the shot clock for New York. Denard Winchester. There's his first offensive rebound. New shot clock for the Knicks, looking for some offense. They've scored only 35 points. Knicks held the Bulls to 38 first half points in game one, and now they're having the same thing done to them here in game number two. Good half court defense by Chicago. They're trying to get it into Patrick Ewing. Four to shoot, three. Oh. Loose ball foul on New York. second personal. Patrick Ewing took that jump shot. He did not have his legs underneath him, but he thought he had to beat the shot clock. He had two seconds. That's yes. all he had. Yes, he had to get it up there. Very frustrating first half. you got to credit the Bulls defense. They've done a tremendous job. They forced turnovers, something they did not do the other night, although they did not get a lot of steals. As you pointed out a while ago, Bob, four offensive fouls, and at least two or three underneath the basket were offensive foul, or excuse me, rebounding fouls, where they pushed off and allowed Chicago to get to the free throw line. 15 fouls have been called on New York in this first half, and the front court free throw shooting woes continue. Will Purdue's going to get in for the final minute 33 of this half, and Cartwright, who's struggling tonight, will go to the bench. Cartwright has not scored in the game. He has two personals. If my math serves me right, what, New York's only scored 11 points in this quarter, didn't they have 24 at the end of one? So 35, so excellent defense. scored three points in the last six minutes and the Bulls lead by 11. That's what the Bulls pressure defense will do. It will cause this right here. It will use up a lot of time. You see Horace Grant chasing the ball and now you're scrambled. You can't run your offense. Good pass from Mason to McDaniel and Xavier McDaniel has 11. What they want to do is disrupt your offense. Do not allow you to use the clock and use time. Get you into their style of game, their pace. looking for more. Pippen from behind for him. Pippen on draft. One for seven. See, they're not allowing him to get in there and get that dunk shot. They're not giving him anything easy. So that, that field goal is not going quite as easy for Scotty. He's, he's looking at it a little bit more than what he'd like to. Phil Jackson talking to him right now. Chicago calls a 20-second timeout. 52.6 seconds remaining in the half. This is really interesting. Deja vu in reverse if there's such a thing. Halftime score on Tuesday night was Knicks 46, Bulls 38. We're 46-37 here, just reversing cities. Pat Riley with his charges. Patrick Ewing only four points tonight. As Doug has been pointing out, he's been tentative of taking that 18, 16, 18-foot jump shot, giving up the ball to the guards, and the guards haven't been knocking it down. And, Bob, I think also, too, with the pressure defense, with what with Chicago scrambling the game, that open shots are being presented to other guys a little bit sooner, and they're taking them. They're not being patient enough to get the ball in Patrick's hands. I think that at least every three times down the floor, he's got to touch the ball just so he gets a feel to make the guys play defense inside and he can create shots out of a double team if he can't get his own 17 on the shot clock for Chicago
tried to draw the foul on that one, didn't get it. I think John Paxson would have loved for Michael to dish to him. He had his feet together and was ready to shoot it. Ewing with six rebounds. Four points. Ten second shot and game clock differential. McDaniel hard to the hoop, has it stripped away by Scotty Pippen. still in his hands that should not have counted but it did and the Bulls lead it by 11 at halftime Pat Riley just now finished giving his not so subtle opinion to the officials Mike Mathis Paul Mahalik and Don Vaden after these commercial messages we'll be going to our studios in Atlanta They have played 24 minutes at Chicago Stadium. The Bulls down one game to nothing, leading the Knicks 48-37 in Game 2 of their Eastern Conference semifinal. Ernie Johnson in our Atlanta studio with the Prudential Halftime Report. Another collegiate underclassman has announced he's coming out and wants to be part of that NBA draft. Harold Miner, the guy they call Baby Jordan from Southern Cal, the All-American, says he's coming out. He joins the ranks of Shaquille O'Neal, Jimmy Jackson, Tracy Murray, who have all declared themselves eligible for the June draft. Joining me here in the studio tonight, Bill Fitch, the head coach of the New Jersey Nets. Bill Fitch has been in the news himself. You know, we want to talk about your situation in Jersey. You made the playoffs this year, but the New York Times, the headline today says the Nets are in the process of making a switch in the head coaching ranks. Tell me what the status is, Bill, and uh, what's going on in Jersey. Well, I've read the, those headlines since December, and uh, not a heck of a lot is uh, different other than that uh, I met with uh, one of the owners uh, today, and I plan on meeting with uh, David Gerstein uh, when I go home to Texas. Uh, the only thing I can tell you, we spent a lot of time today talking about length of contract, and it was somewhere between three days and uh, <laughs> a little longer than that. And uh, other than that, uh, I think you have to you just have to say that that headline is wrong as of today, but uh, five days from now it could be 100% right. You know, there might be some who say, hey, Bill, you look at what happened this year, players talking back to you, that kind of thing. The heck with it you know who wants that job but what is your feeling on on the head coaching job in new jersey well i think a lot of times you know players are going to talk back they've done that for some some years uh, sometimes it's better that they do than uh, that they don't they don't uh, we had some unusual circumstances through the whole year and I'll, I'll be the first to say that i took some unorthodox uh, coaching uh, methods this year uh, things that i never dreamt i'd ever do or or whatever but uh, the main thing was to get the horse uh, across the line or get the airplane down and I think our franchise desperately needed to be in the playoffs. I think that uh, we had a, a, a pretty pretty good season. Our fans, uh, you know, a lot of times they were come disguised as empty seats, and now we've got some people coming. There's a lot more enthusiasm for the program. So I'm, I'm happy for that, as, as for what I do tomorrow or the next day. Uh, uh, that really isn't a, a big concern of mine right now. I'm more or less laying back and, and uh, trying to adjust from this season and being like the folks at home are watching an NBA doubleheader here tonight game two is going to be the Portland Trailblazers Phoenix Suns Portland with a one nothing lead coach and I want to spend some time now with Kevin Duckworth who is standing by live in Portland duck you won game one but I look at the stats and you shoot 39 percent as a team the other guys shoot over 50 percent you consider yourselves lucky to win that game <laughs> very fortunate uh, you know uh, we shot pretty bad but then we crashed the boys pretty good uh, you know, it's just an all-around physical game. Uh, if you look at the stats, you, it, we should have lost the game. But um, you got to look at the overall play of the game, the hard play, and the hustle. Bill Fitch with us here in the studio. Fire one away at Duck here, Coach. Well, Duck, you've got a few more days now of preparation. What's the biggest change for your assignments, the job that you have to do, say, against Phoenix uh, in comparison to what you had to do against the Lakers? Well, it ain't that much different. Um, you know, one of the key things that we have to do is to control the, pen the penetration by Kevin Johnson. Uh, and to slow down the hornet sack on his jumpers because you know kevin penetrate and when he dished the hornet sack caused a lot of problems for us we got to control the boards too because um lang and west new guys like that can jump pretty good leapers and can get 
you know, a lot of rebounds. Uh, Duck, is there a feeling on this Portland ball club, though, that if you do control the backcourt of Phoenix, if you shut down KJ and Horns, that this is in the bag for you? Yeah, we feel that we're in control, um, you know, because if we can shut them down and get out in the, on the floor and run the floor, get easy baskets, then that's the key for us. Let me ask you about this team compared to the team that went to the NBA Finals. How much better are you now? Is this a better ball club? Well, I, I can't say it's an all-around better club. I think we it's just more mentally tough. Uh, you know, people always say that it takes two or three times to get there to realize what it takes and how, the hard work and uh, to be prepared for it. And I believe that this team has the attitude and the um, just the hard work effort for it. Well, you got game due coming up in about an hour out there. We certainly appreciate you taking the time. And, Thank uh, you very much. Good luck to you, Duck. Thank good you very Kevin. much. Kevin Duckworth joining us from Portland. When the Prudential Halftime Report continues, we're going to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers. You know that bunch. Taking on the Boston Celtics. Game 3 preview just ahead. The stadium, 48-37. The Bulls with the lead over the Knicks as the Prudential Halftime Report continues. Ernie Johnson back with you in Atlanta tomorrow night here on TNT. It's Game 3 of the Celtics and Cavs series. That's tied up one apiece after Boston won one at Richfield Coliseum. What's the latest on Larry Bird? Probably not going to play. Craig Sager was in Boston, and we get this report from Craig today. This is a day many thought would never come. After decades of anticipation and years of negotiation, an agreement has finally been reached to build a new Boston Garden. But out with the old, in with the new, might not refer to just the building. Although today, Larry Bird participated in a full court scrimmage for the first time, he is not the Bird of old. And the chants of Larry Larry at the old Boston Garden have been replaced by Reggie Reggie. Feels great. Uh, feels like I have arrived. Uh, everybody is giving me a lot of respect. Uh, and it's a great feeling. Uh, uh, about four years ago, you know, they were, uh, didn't hardly nobody uh, know, know who I was. You know, I was on the end of the bench just sitting there, just waiting for a chance to play. And now to finally be out there on the floor, having the fans chant my name, uh, it's a great accomplishment. One man's loss is another man's gain. How have you gained from the loss of playing time to Larry? Well, it just gave me an opportunity to just get more playing time, develop some confidence in myself, and just get a better feel of the basketball game because while you're sitting there trying to learn, you really don't have that feel for the game because you're not out there and out there on the floor playing, and you need that playing experience to just uh, develop. Replacing Larry Bird in the starting lineup is one thing, but how do you accept the bigger role of replacing him as the team's leader? Well, it's something I see as a challenge. Uh, it's, it's great having the respect from all your teammates, especially the big three, because without them, uh, I wouldn't be right here today. And, and before I can become a leader of the team, I have to get their respect. And that's something that I work hard for. And now that I have it, I have to make sure that I continue to improve in my game. You mentioned the big three. You also had the big three in high school. Is there some <laughs> similarity with the fact that you had the, you're in the back seat in high school? The big three stars in here also? Uh, well, I was used to the role. You know, I, uh, being in the back of superstars uh, has never phased me because I was used to it because I, I was in the same situation in high school. You know, having Reggie Williams there, David Wingate, Tyrone Bogues, uh, you know, they were great, great players also in high school and now being in the NBA also. So, you know, it's the same kind of situation, but it's at a higher caliber now. Today in Boston, the spotlight fell on the new garden but it is Reggie Lewis's time to shine. Craig Sager in Boston. All right, thank you, Craig. Bill Fitch, you guys gave Cleveland a pretty good battle in the first round of four-game series. How do you see the Cavs-Celtics? They're a good basketball team, both teams good. Uh, the six-man effect, uh, Williams and McHale, uh, that's, that's pretty unusual to have two big guys coming off like that. Uh, it's a three out of five series, uh, Boston getting the split. Uh, now they're back in a home court advantage, and both teams I thought had home court advantage. The fans in Cleveland are great. Haven't coached there in the same way in Boston, but Boston right now uh, is, is, I think, has the advantage in that they won the home court advantage back. We'll see game three of that series tomorrow night here on TNT. And remember, we still have another game to go on our doubleheader tonight, the Suns and the Blazers, game two of their series. And we'll cap the night with Inside the NBA, hosted by Fred Hickman, as he joins Doc Rivers and got that Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Larry Bird potato chip thing, too. It's all coming up on Inside the NBA later. Well, the Chicago Bulls, you'll notice a change in the score when we left here. They've lost two points at halftime. 
We just talked to Paul Mahalik right now and said as they left the floor, the officials they had talked with uh, Pat Riley, and that was we're talking about the basket that was scored at the buzzer, actually after the buzzer, by Will Purdue. So as we take a look at this, we'll tell you that the officials thought it over and decided to wave it off. And Doug, you called it at the time. You can see the red light at the top of the board here in just a moment when Purdue gets the ball, and he still had it in his hands when the red light goes off. Well, you're going to see there's the red light. It's off right there, and Will has still got the ball in his hands. So it's an excellent call. I think it's great that the officials got it right. I know that Chicago's not happy with it, but they got the call right. That's the most important thing. Look at the differential in the front and back court scoring for the two teams. The back court scoring and front court pretty even for New York, but look at the backcourt for Chicago. 36, of course, primarily that's coming from Michael Jordan, who had 21. Well, you, the Bulls guard shot 16 for 24. You see Michael 10 for 16, but the rest of the team only 3 for 17. So the Bulls with a 9-point lead at the half, with the Purdue basket being waved away after discussion by the officials at halftime. Wilkins opens up with a basket. Gerald Wilkins was only one of three in the first half, and it's a seven-point. Also a delay game, excuse me, Bob, a delay game on that Charles Oakley tapped the ball away so Chicago could not inbound it quickly, so the next one will be a technical foul. 11.41 to go. We're just opening the second half of play from Chicago Stadium. The Knicks won the first game, 94-89. Guess what? Michael Jordan back in the post again where he played almost the entire first half against Wilkins, who picked up two early fouls. Rebound for Ewing. Patrick Ewing had six rebounds in the first half, but now with seven. And going down to Ewing, trying to get him some more shots. No Foul on the Bulls. He's it's going to be on Horace Grant. Ho uh, Oakley got excellent inside position on Grant. He bumped him out of the post, and Horace had to take the foul to prevent Oakley from the easy layup. Got a mismatch here as Horace Grant steps out on Wilkins. Remember, he likes that little floater. And he scores with it. Mark Jackson had eight points in the first half and suddenly the Bulls who thought they had an 11-point lead at halftime only lead it by five. See, I think when you go up Mark Jackson, you got to make him be a jump shooter and not allow him to go past and get that little floating shot. Big basket there for Pippen, two for eight. Pippen was only one of seven in the first half and just couldn't get into his rhythm. They needed that from Scottie Pippen because they need him. He is such a vital part of this offense. He and Michael Jordan really run the entire attack and create opportunities for everyone else on the floor. which will be his third. Cartwright has yet to score in this game also. Patrick Ewing really is looking to put the ball on the floor tonight. He's really not just catching it, taking that jump shot like he did the other night, so he must feel he can get inside either that or create a shot for one of his teammates. Only five shot attempts from Ewing in the first half. And good foul. Hard foul from Mark Jackson. That's a good foul because Pippen had a dunk. Careless pass out of the double team by Ewing. Paxson gets his hand on it. And here's the foul coming up. You see Paxson tries to loop it to Pippen, who had a breakaway dunk. So nice foul there by Mark Jackson. Bulls by seven. Ewing, Oakley, and McDaniel up front. Wilkins and Jackson in the backcourt for the Knicks. Paxson chopped that one over Ewing and is fouled by Patrick. Patrick second. Well, the cardinal rule of jump shooting is don't foul a jump shooter. John Paxson, a guy who doesn't get to the free throw line that often, will now get back there for his third and fourth attempts of the game. So the 20-foot jump shot that was tried to be blocked by Patrick Ewing was a foul, and that will be two free throws and probably two points for Paxson as an excellent free throw shooter. He hasn't missed anything tonight. He's three of three from the floor also. Well, he put on a shooting demonstration last year in game five against the Lakers in the playoffs. I think what with 10 for 16, but in that fourth quarter, I think he had six or seven tough shots that really gave the Bulls the championship. Four straight to Chicago points, and it's back to a nine-point lead. Well, that's a tough shot. That air ball was caught by McDaniel. Gets it back from Ewing. Inside to Oakley. Oakley foul misses the lay-in. 
Oakley came out in game number one and really came down hard on Bill Cartwright to kind of announce his presence that he was going to play tough against the Bulls and immediately Phil Jackson his former coach walked over to him and said hey we know you play tough we don't have to see the demonstration <laughs> I was amazed that Charles Oakley stood there and listened to the yeah. opponent's coach. Charles will listen to what you have to say. He's, he gives you that rough exterior, but inside, he's, a, he's really a pussy cat. Goals by eight, 9.23 to go third quarter. Looking for Cartwright in the post. Yet to score in the game. That's his first move. See, Horace Grant did a great job that time, not allowing Mark Jackson to catch the ball, making it go to Gerald Wilkins now. They've used up nine seconds on the shot clock trying to get into their offense. That's a great job by Horace Grant that you don't see on the stat sheet. And Daniel's going to take the 19-footer. Daniel has 13. Wilkins trying to stop Michael Jordan, something everybody in the world's tried to do. Nobody with success. Pippen rims it out of there. He's only two of nine shooting tonight. Remember that Scotty Pippen is playing with a sore ankle. Interesting move to the hoop there. That'll be a travel and a violation. Well, Michael Jordan caused that, and I tell you what he did. He faked like he was going to go after Mark Jackson, and then went back into the passing lane to play Gerald Wilkins. No place to go for Mark Jackson, so he had to take the extra step. Now they've isolated the side for Michael. Seven to shoot. That's good defense. Gerald Wilkins did an excellent job defensively that time. A hand in the face, that's all you can really ask. Wilkins is open on the baseline. Well, that shot was ugly. He's really been struggling in the playoffs. Look out! Uh -uh, Michael says, Charles, I know you're going to foul me. I'm going to pull up and take this little shot. I do not want to go to the hospital yet. He knows, Oak. He knows that would have been a big foul. Bulls' biggest lead of the game. Chicago's playing defensively, Bob. It's really taking Ewing out of the game because what's happening is they're not allowed to run their offense. They're trapping, forcing them to throw ahead, and either Xavier McDaniel or one of the other guys are taking the shot, and Patrick Ewing is not touching the basketball. So Chicago is serving their purpose, although there's no turnovers being forced. They're keeping the ball out of Patrick Ewing's hands, and that's really what they want to do. Hopefully, with his second person, pulls by 10. Next ball. Uh oh, Patrick Ewing looks like he got either a knee or something, but he is limping coming up the floor. I don't know if he twisted an ankle or got kicked in the knee. Keep our eye on Ewing. Jackson penetrating. Another turnover. Mark Jackson's having a real tough night. 13 New York turnovers, and Jackson has had only one assist in this ball game. That's at least four turnovers. He had two in the first half. He had that bad pass, and he had to walk the previous time down the floor. So that's four turnovers and only one assist. Looking to Cartwright. Horace Grant, tough move in the face of you. Timeout, Pat Riley. Bulls by 12. That's the biggest lead of the game. at their biggest lead of 12, 6.54 to go in the third quarter. Let's look at tonight's Chevrolet scoreboard. Actually, let's look back to last night for that Western semifinal game one and Utah defending at the Delta Center. Big game from the mailman. Yes, it was. And I, I tell you, I watched the game last night and U Utah had about a 13-point lead. John Stockton went out of the game and Seattle started trapping. Actually went up two with a 17-2 spurt and then the big fourth quarter by Carl Malone. Tyrone Corbin with a big ball game, so Utah 
doing something they didn't do very well all season. That was beat Seattle in Salt Lake City. Greg Anthony, the rookie from UNLV, in along with Mason. Patrick Ewing, Ewing Wilkins, and McDaniel. Patrick Ewing has more assists three than field goals two on the night. Three to shoot. Boy, Mason had a shot. He didn't want to take it. 14th New York turnover. They had eight in game one. Chicago defense has been great tonight. You can just see they're swarming, they're trapping, they're pressing, scrambling the game, something we talked about that we thought they would do more of tonight, and they've definitely done that. that time that's really the first time this quarter that New York has shown the patience to get the ball take the time execute and make the Bulls play for 24 seconds off that baseline screen Paxson missing Chicago ball John Starks gets into the game for McDaniel so it's Mason Starks Ewing Wilkins and Anthony and Michael Jordan after really being on fire in the first half has missed seven of his last eight shots well, we talked a little bit about fatigue and you know Michael's a superbly conditioned athlete but he really expended a lot of energy in the first part of this ball game getting his team off to a good start Grant couldn't score and the Knicks come away with the ball chance to cut it to a single digit lead Jam from Gerald Wilkins. Nice play and a good feed from Stark. That was quick. He turned the corner and went up quickly. Had he not, that would have been blocked. When New York will not go away, though, Bob, they're hanging tougher than I thought they would tonight. I, I thought this might be one of those emotional letdown games and get blown out. They have not done that. Paxson was left alone by Anthony. Now he's missed his last two jumpers. Here comes Starks against Jordan. Well, that's confidence. He didn't back away. I tell you, John Starks went right at Michael Jordan. Three straight field goals, and New York is right back in this ball game. Down now only six. 6-0 six run by New York. It's a 56-50 game. 4.41 to go in the third, and Chicago has called a timeout. Knicks have cut it to six points, and we talk about John Starks. He's just a young guy, but look at the confidence against one of the best defensive players in the game. Beautiful spin move by John Stark. Six unanswered points. Now, the point we talked about is you start to get a little tired. Everything Chicago done has been at the perimeter except Michael Jordan posting. In this quarter, Chicago's guards, after going 16 for 24 in the first half, are one for seven. Their big guys are two for six in this quarter, which makes them five for 23 on the ball game. So everything Chicago's getting really is from their guards. That's a disturbing statistic. Normally, Scottie Pippen is a much bigger factor in their offense. Michael missed his last seven of his last eight. The back door to Grant for the can. And that was a set play. Absolutely. Out of a timeout to get Horace Grant to score. Excellent play out of a timeout. Now looking for Ewing. Cartwright pushing him away, then fronting him. Ewing coming to the other side. Starks loses it. Chicago ball. That's where Starks has got to be careful. He beat Michael once. Take your time. When you go back at Michael, he's going to accept the challenge. you got to take your time. Now posting Jordan against Starks. Isolation. Foul before the drive. Starks will have four. We are in personal foul three. Challenge Starks is four. The team's four. Right back to Michael in the post this time against Gerald Wilkins. So New York is going with three guards right now. They're playing Anthony Starks and Gerald Wilkins to give them a little bit more quickness. Now they lose size, so Mason and Ewing are going to have to really do the job on the boards. New 24-second clock after the kickball. 
349 to go in the period. Knicks with 14 fouls, Bulls with three. Jackson. He's missed three in a row from the perimeter. Knicks ball. Greg Anthony, the rookie from UNLV. We have a double technical. New York number two, Greg Anthony. Chicago 33, Scotty Pippen. Pippen and Greg Anthony were mixing it up a little bit there, so a quick call from the officials for a double technical. Next time will be an ejection. That's the overflow from the other night. In game one, Greg Anthony stood Pippen up with a back kick. And there's been a little bad blood, so that's the overflow from game one. That's why in a seven-game series, things get very, very heated when you see a team seven straight times. Eight-point Bulls lead. Anthony trying to take B.J. Armstrong. Seven on the shot clock. Anthony not very patient. Throws up the jumper. Jordan with a rebound. Jackson was a little cold, missed his last three, so B.J. shot it very well. Phil Jackson came, with, came in with him, and he answered. He's now four for five from the floor. Whistle away from the ball down on the baseline. It's against Chicago. That's Pippen. That's his first. But so you look up there, and Patrick Ewing has four points in this ball game, ever having such a big game the other night. But you've got to credit the Bulls' defense. He very rarely has touched the ball in the offensive end. Now he gets it. You see where he was. They wanted to travel. Didn't come. The throw away from Greg Anthony. And the Knicks are losing some concentration. 16th turnover in the game. When you go with young, enthusiastic, energetic guards, you give up something else, too. That's a little patience. And Greg Anthony right now gets a little hyper out there. He's just got to calm himself down. See, that's a good thing he does with his speed and quickness. Three on one. That's a travel. Starts to hit. It's 17 turnovers. Well, the other night, the story of the game was no turnovers, basically. Seven in the ball game. Tonight, 17. So that's 10 less possessions. The Knicks only got 33 shots at the basket in the first half after 81 to the game in game one. Armstrong, not this time. Starks kept it alive. Three on two again. Oh. Wilkins fouled by Pippen. That's his second. Knicks getting out running a little bit more in this quarter. Late in the quarter. 2-11 to go. Down by 10. And they really have the running team on the floor. Mason is much quicker and faster than Oakley. And you've got Wilkins, Anthony, and Starks, so three fast players, and you have Ewing. The big thing is, Bob, as we talked, is rebounding. If they rebound the ball, they can get some easy scores. They have not been able to convert. They've turned the ball over two or three times where they had opportunities to, to advance it against Chicago, maybe get an easy score in the open court. This will not go away, though. It's still a nine-point game. You, you keep waiting for Chicago to blow this out to 18 or 20, and, and New York hit, is hanging tough. Wilkins knocks them both down. Eight-point game, 2.07 to go, third quarter. It's a nine-point halftime lead by Chicago. Trailing in the series. Scotty wants to post up John Starks. He has the advantage inside. I think Ewing will come doubling. That's going to be five on Starks. And that's the penalty against New York, so Chicago will shoot. But it took them all the way. It took them a little over ten minutes to get into the penalty. Bulls are in the penalty now. McDaniel's going to get back into the game as Starks sits down. So it'll be Anthony and Wilkins at the guards with McDaniel, Ewing, and Mason. Starks on the bench with five. You see Mark Jackson, who has really struggled tonight. I mean, two assists in this game. Ewing, the rebound. He has ten. 
<laughs> Nick's ball. Michael looked like he was totally out of the plate, took two gigantic steps and a leap. The one you see in the commercial where he just glides through the sky and knocked the ball down. Scott Williams coming in for the Bulls. He'll get a good hand. He's played very well. The fans want to see him on the floor. He's going to be going in, I think, for... So they're going to move Horst now over to the three spot to go against Xavier McDaniel. So big lineup for Chicago. Pippen, excuse me, uh, Horst, Grant, Cartwright, and Scott Williams now on the front line. Pippen with only five points in this game. Wilkins tried to split the double team, lost the ball. There's Greg Anthony in the middle again. Now the foul is going to be on New York. The Nick guards are trying to do too much on the screen roll against Chicago. Chicago is really showing up big, and, and Michael Jordan is a guy you're not going to beat off the dribble. That time he tried to split him, it was a turnover, and then this frustration foul trying to get it back. So, Bob, it's very important when you have a, a play against a quick, fast team that you move the basketball in the air and not put it on the floor because when you put it on the floor, they can react. New York, eight turnovers in this quarter. Will Purdue comes in for Bill Cartwright. <laughs> Purdue played eight minutes in the first half, had a basket taken away at the buzzer, and had three rebounds. And a block shot. See, Michael Jordan doesn't mind you take a basket away from him because he gets so many of them. Will saying, you take mine away, I don't get that many of them. Ewing <laughs> with the rebound. <laughs> Ten-point Bulls lead, minute 26 to go third. Ewing have one field goal attempt in this quarter. McDaniel puts it back up and in. McDaniel has 15. As you said a moment ago, Knicks keep hanging around, however. That's down around 10. Look at that change of direction from Jordan. That's unfair to be able to do that. Purdue with the bad pass. Wilkins follows Jordan, knocked it out of bounds. Chicago ball. Well, Jordan actually knocked it off the Knicks. What a play. What a great effort by Michael Jordan. He did not quit on the play. Chased Anthony down, forced the shot, and then turned around and knocked it off Wilkins' leg. Going to spread the floor and let Michael penetrate. You're going to help. You got to help off Will Purdue. They do. Leave him the shot. Good defense that time by New York. They got to know who you can leave. They left the right person. Chicago by eight. Eight second differential and shot at game club. Hey, Bob, they score here. It's a six point ball game. Tough penetrating Chicago defense. Bowman's trying to do it on the dribble. Another wall. That's the ninth turnover in this quarter, the 19th in the game. He talked about trying to do too much with the dribble. Against Michael Jordan, you've got to pass the basketball. And yet, it's only an eight-point close lead. Who tipped that in? Williams or Williams? I think it was Williams. Yes. They're going to credit the ball, the basket to Horace Grant. And it's a 10-point Bulls lead going into the final 12 minutes. Beautiful downtown Chicago. The Bulls have a 10-point lead. Bulls led by nine at the half. The Knicks had nine turnovers in the third quarter, and you'd think the Bulls had an opportunity to blow them away, but the Knicks are still hanging in here. Well, Chicago only shot seven for 20 in the quarter, seven for 15 for New York, but as you talked about, the turnovers have been deadly for New York tonight. They have not gotten enough shots at the basket, only 48 shot attempts in the game. They had 81 attempts in game one. Patrick Ewing only got one shot in that quarter, so he got three in the first quarter, two in the second, and one in the third, 
and he is just not getting the basketball. You've got to credit the Chicago defense, but I think on the same time, you've got to talk about the impatience of the New York guards. They're letting their enthusiasm to get them caught up here against Chicago, try to do too much off the dribble. They've got to at least let him catch the ball. Bulls are strong when they're leading <laughs> after three, 60 and four. Williams and Purdue are in for Chicago. Pippen with only five points. Followed by Williams. The last two Chicago baskets, one by Horace Grant, the other by Scott Williams, both on tip-ins. As Ewing has gone to block the shot, no one has gone to the boards. Remember, small team, you've got to get after the boards. There's the double team on Ewing. McDaniel to the hoop, he's fouled. Ewing turned around, and both Scott Williams and Purdue were right in his face. Williams just picked up his fourth first. Kiki Vandeweghe coming in to try to give New York some offense. Heaven knows they needed only 54 points they have scored going into the final 12. Well, what Pat Riley has recognized is out of the double teams, if they'll throw the ball into Ewing and they'll be patient, out of the double teams, maybe Vandeweghe can get an outside shot. But they've got to get the ball into Ewing for that behavior to be able to happen. Basket by Anthony Mason. It's a 10-point ball game. Now, Scotty Pippen sees Vandeweghe. His eyes are going to get big. He's going to want to take him, so we'll have to watch that matchup. Foul's going to be called on Anthony. Now, Anthony made a mistake there, and the referees are being nice to him. They have one delay a game. Anthony threw the ball to the other end of the floor. Had they called it, it would have been the technical foul. So for the grace of the officials there, you're not shooting a technical free throw right now. 10.54 to go in the ball game. Each team has committed one team foul. It's a 10-point Chicago lead. So in this matchup right now, you better watch Pippen and Vandaway. Good pass. B.J. Armstrong to Scott Williams. Scott Williams played well for Chicago in the final series last year against the Lakers, and he's doing it again tonight. An emotional player and giving them a very big spark on their front line. 22nd timeout, Bulls by 12. Chicago trailing in this series after losing 94 to 89 in game number one. These two teams will play back to back this weekend in New York. They'll play an afternoon game on Saturday, an early evening game on Sunday. And Doug, to whom will the advantage go in the back-to-backs in the playoffs? The well, home team? I, I think it's very difficult to beat a team twice in 36 hours. I, you know, I think the scheduling helps Chicago in a way, but then I say also, with Bill Cartwright playing those many minutes, it's going to be difficult. That's why they're going to need this guy right there, because he's going to give them some young, fresh legs to play against Patrick Ewing. So I think it's tough to beat a team twice in 36 hours. Hodges, Armstrong, Scott Williams, Purdue, and Pippen on the floor for Chicago. Ten to shoot for the Knicks. See, now, if he'll take his time, Vandaway will get the shot. This is why he's in the game, right there. Boom. And he drains a three. But that's why you got to take your time. you got to throw the ball in the post, get the double team, and swing it. Two seconds on the shot clock. They did show poise. Mason, 6'7", 250 pounds, only 6'7", to be playing in the land of the Giants down there, and that was Scott Williams' fifth foul. Ewing gets the jumper, and there's Mason again. Now, he has the strength of Oakley, but he has speed, and he can finish around the basket. He has more lift in his leap. I like that, more lift in his leap. <laughs> that sounds like a good line for a commercial, get more lift in your leap. Let's find a product. <laughs> Jordan back on the floor now. Mason, nine points and eight rebounds tonight. Well, you saw in game one, Anthony Mason played 32 minutes to Charles Oakley, 16 in the first half. 
He came off the bench and played 15 minutes. Oakley played 11. So you can see that Pat Riley is not hesitant at all to go to him whenever he feels like he needs a lift or he sees things he's slipping. It's an eight-point Bulls lead, 9.34 to go in this game. Knicks hanging around. Isolate Jordan. Tyson to Grant blocked by Ewing. See, Patrick Ewing is not allowing any action around the basket. I still think you've got to come down and you've got to show patience. You've got to get the ball to Patrick Ewing, feel the double team, and then find the open shooter. Good pass to Ewing. It's a six-point game. Patience. Patience is what you have to have. When the team overcommits on the screen roll, you've got to counteract it and find the open man. They've done that the last two possessions. Only Ewing's eighth shot attempt of the game. He's in three of them. Away, good defensive positioning against Pippen, who's going to just try to back him in again. Well, Ewing's going to come over and give help on Scotty if he tries to post him, so be aware of Ewing. They got the foul this time on Van Away. Pretty good defensive job on Pippen, but he just can't handle him on the block. So what's going to happen is Scotty's backing down. Ewing is taking his time. He's waiting, he's waiting. And when Scotty commits himself, he's going to come over for the block shot. What has to happen is New York has to guard the offensive board because they've snuck in Chicago and got two scores when Ewing's come over to give help. See, he'll come over and give help on Michael on this shot. Someone's got to help on the boards. Right there's your man. Grant, Michael Jordan dished it after he saw three Knicks surround him. So that you get in the post, you get help, and you find the open man. Bulls by eight. Now looking for Ewing again. Cartwright back in the game. Bill Cartwright has only scored two points in this game. Ewing. He's hit two in a row from the perimeter. Look out. Yeah, you hear the sigh in Chicago's crowd. You say, uh-oh, didn't we see this the other night when he scored 16 in the last 20 points in the fourth quarter? The go-to guy for the Knicks. He's hit his last two jump shots. Armstrong, nice hesitation. And then Pat Ewing with a hard foul on Pippen. Pippen will go to the line. How many dunks have you seen Pippen or Jordan get in these two games? I can't remember one. Not for Pippen or Jordan. I don't think, and I think one of the things is we're not going to allow you to dunk the ball. Scotty cocks it back, and there's Ewing, and Scotty almost makes a sensational play, but he realizes Pat Riley and this team does. That's what ignites Chicago. They'll they'll take the two free throws. But when Pip, Pippen and Jordan get up skywalking, everybody gets excited. Um, the Bulls had no dunks in game one, and the dunks that have come here in this game have been follows, like, for instance, by Scott Williams. Right, right. But I don't remember Michael or Scott, either one having a dunk in these two games. Exactly right. Pippen playing with a sore ankle tonight, struggling offensively, as you saw by those numbers, and missing that free throw. You, get it, you gain a point on that possession. With his 12th rebound, it's a seven-point Bulls lead, 7.48 to go in this game. screen roll he and Michael Jordan they're gonna force somebody to hit an outside shot Jordan draws the double team six to shoot that's a three run down by Vandaway Pippen only two of eleven tonight eight for eighteen in the first game Anthony trying to post Ewing not this time if it goes in though if they double team on the dribble Vandaway will get the shot Ewing's hit three in a row from there and Doug, you asked the question in the first half. You had turned that shot down time after time. Maybe he was just saving them. It is a five-point Bulls lead. The Dutch boy points in the paint. New York up 28 to 16 over Chicago, and Ewing starting to come alive. Well, he's stepping out on the floor and making that little jump shot that we saw him shoot so effectively. It'll be interesting to see if Chicago now is going to decide as soon as he catches it to come double him immediately and force him to pass the basketball. Oh, do we have a good time in Chicago? I was doing this here. At the had York. you not gone into broadcasting, Bob, had, <laughs> what a job we had for you. <laughs> Now you're rolling over the NBA. Look at this. Another good-looking Chicago guy. <laughs> Surfs up at the Madhouse on Madison Street. I think I take offense at that. I don't, I don't know if I... Oh, we love each other. We can poke fun. 
Armstrong over Mason. Big bucket by B.J. Armstrong. Now, well, B.J. played very well tonight. What is that, five for six from the floor for B.J. tonight? Hit some big shots. 73-66. That's his fourth personal. A team foul situation. Both teams, Knicks and Bulls, with three. 6.20 to go in the ballgame. One of the real factors in game one was that Chicago got in the penalty early, so it was very difficult for them to guard Michael Jordan late in the game without fouling him and putting him on the free throw line. They'd like to get the ball to Ewing. Chicago doing an excellent job preventing him from getting on this side of the floor. So they go to Mason. Good up and under move. Well, he, he just went right around Horace Grant. That was quickness and power. Bumped into him. Horace went back, and Mason spun right off of him. 11 points, 8 rebounds for Anthony Mason. Tennessee State. Jordan kicks it to Armstrong. Rims out the three. Now, Greg Anthony's got to take his time. And they got to get the ball in Patrick Huey's hand. Run a little screen roll, let him pop out or drop it into post to him. Starks trying to drive on Grant. He got in there. Big rebound, Mason! He missed it, but he'll go to the line. This game, if he hits these free throws, is all of a sudden a three-point game. I think Chicago's getting more than what they wanted tonight in this ball game. Obviously, the, the loss the other night that you would think Everybody thought, and I think Pat Riley had a very good point. He says, why is it that when we won this game tonight, everybody said that Chicago, we woke Chicago up like we weren't supposed to do that. And I think he made a great point. I think people have underestimated this New York team, and I think a lot of it is because they finished the season so poorly. They slipped into the playoffs. They did not finish well. Pat Riley took them down to Charleston, South Carolina. They had three days of boot camp. They came back to their Pistons series. And they have been strong ever since. You've got to give them a lot of credit. I mean, Chicago, if they advance, will win and earn this series. Mason drops them both. It's a three-point game. Coming up tonight, game two, Phoenix at Portland. Ron Thulin, Jack Gibbons will have that for you right after this. Portland leads that series one game to none. And that was a real exciting game on Tuesday night. Don't want to miss it on TNT. And my number's right. And Michael Jordan had 21 in the first half, only two in the second. Your numbers are right. The fatigue starts to become a factor. I want to tell you, I made the point early. Michael was working so hard to get the team off, and he's been a little out of sync. He's one for six in this half after going 10 for 16 in the first half. Knicks can pull to within one or tie it on this possession. And also penalty situation the rest of the way, Bob. So if they foul, New York will be shooting free throws. There's the double team, Ewing, all the way across the court. Starks thought about the three, only four. Now he drops the three up there off judgments Greg Anthony held the ball on the skip pass and he caused that violation he's got to either make his move or give it up sooner excellent defense though by Chicago New York only one of eight from downtown tonight Jordan alone he ain't gonna miss that only a second field goal of the second half Bulls by five crowd back into it Great Bulls point. This one off the turnover. We talked about the Bulls creating turnovers. A careless play by Greg Anthony. He's played hard, but that's 20 turnovers. That's four by Anthony. And here's what Horace Grant gives you. Speed and quickness from the power forward position. Horace is starting to wake up. That's 10 points in the second half after a very quiet three in the, in the first half. 77-70 Chicago. 4-12 to go. And here's a significant statistic. Chicago four times have been held under 100 points out of the eight all year by the Knicks. They're not going to score 100 here tonight. I don't think it's going to be a 90-point game unless somebody gets on fire in the last four minutes. There's that Chicago pressure. 
just to get the disruptive timing. Mason trying to go all the way to the hoop. Another turnover. That's 21 for the Knicks. But I keep saying it. You can't beat Chicago off the dribble. 21 turnovers, and we can count the number of times they've made that tonight. Two for 12 for Scottie Pippen, and he's really pulling the string on his shot. That's 10 for 30 in the series right now for Scottie Pippen. Two for 12. Ewing with 13 rebounds. Big possession for the Knicks here. Ewing with his 14th rebound. Inside to Anthony, he gets it to Mason. Look at the Chicago defense. Good ball movement, Van away, misses, and is fouled. Or nothing easy in there, though. Kiki Vandaway laid that ball up and covered his head. He was waiting for someone to crack him, and they did. It's three on Pippen. Frenetic action. Mason to Anthony. He comes over. Here comes Horace Grant to give help. And now Vandaway lays it up and says, get me out of here quickly. He took one right in the face from Scottie Pippen. Vandaway, an 80% free throw shooter. It's a six-point game. 320 remaining. I'm sorry, Bob. The reason Vandaway is on the line I mean, is the reason he's in the game right now is because with all the doubling and, and trapping, Pat Riley feels like maybe he might get an outside shot or a three-pointer. The Bulls have done a good job of covering and rotating to him other than the one time. Remember that the Knicks have a foul to give inside the two minutes. They've committed only three. Well, how about this matchup? Vandaway on Jordan. And you know what? Let me tell you something, okay? Let me tell you what Pat Riley's thinking is. You put your weaker defender on Jordan because he's going to get his anyway, and you say, we've got to shut down Pippen and Armstrong. So that's the thinking. You, you might think, why is this going on? But knowing Pat Riley the way I do, that's, that's his thinking right now. And Michael Jordan has struggled here, only four points in the second half prior to this trip to the line. And I think you pointed out, Doug, very clearly that a lot of that has to do not just with Nick's defense, but with Jordan's fatigue. And missing a free throw is definitely a sign of fatigue for Michael Jordan. You know, the Bulls against Miami, they played heavy minutes, Michael and Scott, even though they won that series in three straight. Both of those guys averaged well over 40 minutes in that series. And although it was only a three-game series, those minutes start taking their toll as you go through the playoffs. And only the third and fourth free throws for Jordan. Let's see how many four he gets down in this final three minutes. It's like a six-point Bulls lead. They'd like to free up Vandaway if they could for a jump shot. Remember, Starks is a big three-point shooter. Pippen better get up on Vandaway. Substitution, and I'm sure if Pat Riley can in dead ball situations, maybe get Vandaway back on the floor. But with the Bulls having the ball now, he wants his better defenders on the floor. It's a four point game with 2.47 to go. Both teams shoot free throws the rest of the way. Ooh, Scotty over. Wow. Very close to over and back. Malik said the ball didn't get over. They're going to call Mason for the foul. If we see that play by Scotty Pippen, I don't know whether our great director in the truck, Lonnie Dale, has it, but let's watch it. If, if we stop it right there, okay? You've got, to you've got to establish both feet, you and the ball, across half court. So Scotty has not done that. He's straddled it. He's allowed to throw back. All right, that's a good play and great camera work by our truck. Tremendous. And a good call by Paul Mahalik. He explained that to Pat Riley. Pat didn't want to hear it. <laughs> Bulls by five. Grant, only three points in the first half and now 11 in this half. Bulls have found a way to get Horace Grant into the game. He is one of the big three, and they better not forget that. 
That ball hung on the rim. Mason couldn't get it. Loose ball foul on Chicago. Knicks ball. They're calling it on Grant. That's his second. You call that so right. The ball bounced one more time on the rim, and the New York Knickerbocker, who was in front, mistimed his jump. Michael got it, but Patrick Ewing came over, defended the shot. Now Ewing to the line to cut this lead down to three. 2.33 to go in the game. 15 rebounds for Ewing tonight. He hasn't scored big. He has two block shots. Excellent free throw shooter. I tell you, the one thing you have to appreciate about Patrick Ewing in tonight's game is he didn't start forcing shots. You know, he didn't start becoming selfish and looking for his own shot. He's gotten much more aggressive as the game has gone on, but he did not get selfish and look just for himself. It is a three-point Bulls lead, 2.33 to go. We've seen a couple of beauties here at Chicago Stadium. New York is playing their heart out. Jordan's fouled. Bob, to be honest with you, I thought tonight's game was going to be a blowout. As I was sitting around my house today, I did not know whether New York could come back with this kind of emotional attack in this kind of building after winning game one. They blew out the Pistons in game one. They've had four straight emotional tussles. You come in here and you win one. I think this shows a tremendous amount of courage on their part. New York, I mean, uh, Chicago is having to work very, very hard in tonight's game. New York 9 of 10 from the free throw line this period, too. Chicago only 3 of 7. Jordan missing again from the line. We saw his fatigue in game one. This happened also. Missed them both. Rebound Ewing. Mason, by the way, has five personal fouls. And Michael tonight is 2 for 6 from the line. Patrick Ewing's got to touch the basketball. They're going to come double-team it, though. Drains it from 19 feet. It's a one-point lead by the Bulls. Phil Jackson gets timeout, and this crowd sitting on their hands. The double-team gets there late. Ewing gets the jump shot. Well, we, we wondered why Patrick Ewing wasn't shooting this shot early. The ball comes, and we're going to see right there if we hold it. Here comes Horace Grant. He's playing Anthony Mason. He's going to try to come all the way across the floor and double team. He can't get there soon enough. But watch this as the shot goes. Watch what else happens. Look at this. If he misses, Mason is on the boards. So I think Chicago's going to have to make a decision on this, what they're going to do. Ewing, four points and 11 rebounds the first three quarters. 12 points, five rebounds this period, and we have two minutes left. How about John Starks came over to me during the timeout? He said, we're going to win this game. He walked all the way over here. Ten to shoot for Chicago. And we're looking for Michael Jordan. Six to shoot. Boy, oh boy, someone's going to have to look for it. B.J. Armstrong in the paint. Big bucket. Well, he's made some big ones all night. Bulls by three. It's a big possession right here. Chicago's got to get a stop. Looking for Ewing. Cartwright all over him. Cartwright playing with five fouls. An illegal defense. Oh, he's called an offensive foul. On Patrick Ewing. Wow. Wrestling with Cartwright on the block. Wow, Mike Mathis with a call all the way across the floor. In a crucial time. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Let's watch it again. Let's Here, see if it was happening. Here's the wrestling, the arm wrestling going on. And right there is where he called the foul when Ewing put his arm down against Cartwright. But a gutsy call by Mike Mathis. Bulls with a three-point lead. Night 16 to go. I guess not so gutsy if you're in Chicago Stadium. That'd be a gutsy call in New York. Grant misses. Wilkins with a rebound. Another chance for the Knicks. Timeout, New York. Trailing by three, a minute five to go. Riley just said, come on, Mike. New York, 1-1. New York has to feel very confident the way they have played Chicago in here defensively that they can get the job done. 
last year in the final series the Lakers won the first game upsetting the Bulls in the championship series but then the Bulls came back with blowouts not so here 86 78 neither team scores 90 points and the Bulls get the eight point win and it wasn't that big a margin when you look at these tenacious New York Knicks. Once again, it was madness on madness.